This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. Go to cardkingdom.com for all kinds of magic products. Hello everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and it is Friday, so that means it's time for another MTG Top 10. With Ravnica Allegiance just around the corner, I thought it would be a good time to look at the best cards for each of the guilds that will be appearing in that set, just like I did before Guilds of Ravnica came out. I've actually already done Rakdos in the past, and today we're looking at Azorius. To be eligible for this list, a card had to have a blue and white color identity, just like Azorius. Overall, there are 175 cards in Magic that are eligible under these criteria, and in this video, we're going to talk about the 10 that have had the biggest impact on competitive Magic. Before we get started, a quick reminder on how I scored these lists. Pro Tour, Legacy, and Vintage Championship Top 8s are worth 2 points, and a Grand Prix Top 8 is worth 1 point. Now, on to number 10. At number 10, we have a card that costs Azorius hybrid mana, and that's Judge's Familiar. Between being a reasonably costed evasive creature and having the ability to make your opponent wait longer to cast important spells like board sweepers, Judge's Familiar is the kind of card that is nice in an aggro deck, something that isn't true of most of the other cards on this list. In Return to Ravnica block, it picked up a top 8 in a Selesnya aggro deck. In Standard, it was mostly featured in Devotion to Blue decks. It picked up its first point in Modern just earlier this year at Grand Prix Las Vegas, where it was in a Creatures Toolbox deck. A deck that runs Collected Company, a card we're going to mention a lot in this video, and Court of Calling, and can search up specific cards depending on what's going on in the game. The Familiar is particularly powerful to search up at instant speed when it can just become a counterspell. That top 8 could be a sign that Judge's Familiar is about to see some more play in Modern. At number 9, we have the first of two modal cards on the list, Ojutai's Command. Part of a fairly powerful cycle of commands associated with the various Dragon Lords of Tarkir, Ojutai's gives you a bunch of attractive options. Modal cards are nice because it's hard for there to be a board state where they don't do something because of the flexibility. It isn't too hard to choose options that give you a 2 for 1 with Ojutai's Command, provided you stay away from the one that gains you 4 life, although sometimes you do need to use that one. Most of the time, though, you're going to want to be countering something and getting a card, whether it's through drawing or getting a creature back from your graveyard. In those scenarios, it's a 2 for 1. It was played a lot in Standard, including in Jeskai Midrange and Esper Control. However, its most successful home was in Bant Collected Company decks, decks filled with creatures with low converted mana cost so that Collected Company could hit them, so of course, Ojutai's Command's reanimation effect can hit them too. However, it has never seen play in Modern or other non-rotating formats where it is outshined by fellow Command, Cryptic Command. At number 8, we have a creature that hails from the plane of Innistrad, where blue-white is represented by spirits, and this card is, of course, a spirit. It's Spell Queller. This is a super powerful card, the kind that people knew would be great from the moment it was spoiled. Countering a spell and getting a 2-3 flyer for only 3 mana is an incredible deal. Sure, yeah, they may get that spell back later, and it has to have converted mana cost 4 or less, but frequently the spell you counter is not nearly as impactful if they don't get to cast it when they wanted to, and most spells are going to still be able to be countered by this. It saw a lot of play in Standard, where it was legal at the same time as Collected Company, we're 3 for 3 on mentioning that so far, being able to hit Spell Queller with that card is pretty insane. After Collected Company rotated, the Queller found a new home in Standard in Azorius aggro decks. Spell Queller has found some success in Modern 2, already putting up top 8s in Collected Company decks there, Blue-White Control, and Nightfall combo decks. Spell Queller even gets cast in Vintage, and while it hasn't put up a Vintage Championship Top 8 just yet, it has gotten pretty close numerous times in decks like Jeskai Stoneblade. It will continue to put up points in Modern, and may even break through in Vintage in the near future. At number 7, we have the oldest card to make the list, Meddling Mage, who lets you turn off a card in your opponent's deck as long as the mage stays in play, which is especially devastating against combo decks and other decks that are reliant on one or two cards to win the game for them. This card was designed by Chris Picula, who won the Magic Invitational, and the card actually bears his likeness, which is pretty cool. The Mage picked up only one Pro Tour Top 8 at the Block Pro Tour, and only one Grand Prix Top 8 in Standard its first time through the format. In Extended, it saw a lot of play, though, especially in an aggro control deck called Super Grow, but also in aggressive decks like White Weenie, Affinity, and Zoo. In some of these decks, it was a sideboard card to shut off things like Isochron Scepter. Since it got reprinted in Alara Reborn, it got another run through Standard, though, again, it didn't do much with that, only putting up two Grand Prix Top 8s. However, this printing was important because it also meant it was legal in Modern, and it has picked up multiple Grand Prix Top 8s in that format. Just in the last year, it started seeing play in Collected Company decks, so, yes, again, Collected Company, where it is a nice hit off of the top of your library, especially if you have an idea of what's in your opponent's hand. Most recently, it has become one of the cards in the Humans deck that has recently jumped to Tier 1 in Modern, 
as it offers solid stats and a disruptive ability along with the human creature type. At number 6 we have another Azorius modal card. This one is Azorius Charm. Like Ojutai's command, the flexibility it offers is very nice. Giving your whole board lifelink, cycling it, or putting a creature on top of your opponent's library are all decent options. The last option is the most frequently used and probably the most efficient use of it, but there are times when the other two options can really shine. The Charm managed 5 top 8s at the Block Pro Tour, showing up in both Esper and Azorius Control decks. It saw a lot of play in Standard 2, pretty exclusively in Control decks like Blue White Control, Esper Control, and Bant Control. It has never seen play in non-rotating formats, and it probably never will, so cards behind it that are still seeing play could pass it soon. At number 5, we have another spirit from Innistrad, Geist of St. Traft. Geist is a crazy card. For 3 mana, you get a 2-2 with Hexproof that makes an angel with 4-4 four, four, and flying every time he attacks. In some games, this effectively makes Geist a 3 mana 6-6. Six, six. Geist saw play in his block format, showing up in 3 of the top 8 decks at Pro Tour Avacyn Restored in 2012, 2 in Vant Aggro, and 1 in a Miracle deck. In Standard, he was such a key card that some decks were named for him. In particular, the Saint White Weenie decks, which were blue-white aggro decks that basically only had blue in them to cast Geist. He also saw play in blue-white Delver and Bant Hexproof, which was a deck that tried to slap auras on hexproof creatures, which is always an effective strategy. Geist with auras on him is just stupid, and that's what those decks wanted to do. You know, kind of the downside of Geist is that he doesn't survive most combat, right? But if you start slapping auras on him, he's going to start surviving combat, and his angel friend is going to be bashing you in the face even harder. Geist didn't only see play in Standard either, he has seen a fair amount of play in Modern as well. He picked up top 8s in Delver and Cobblade, primarily in Modern between 2011 and 2015. He was idle for a few years, but just this year he's seeing play in Modern again in Blue White and Jeskai Control decks, where he is one of the win conditions. At number 4 we have a card that is so good it got banned out of its Standard format, and that is Reflector Mage. Reflector Mage was an incredibly powerful creature. He would be a good card if you just bounced the creature, but bouncing it and not letting your opponent cast it for a turn is some serious business. Reflector Mage was dominant in his time in Standard before appropriately getting hit with the Banhammer. While he was legal in Standard, it basically jumped from one incredibly powerful deck to another, playing a large role in how good those decks were. In its early time in Standard, it was part of Rally the Ancestors decks, which could return the mage from the graveyard along with a bunch of other creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities. After Rally rotated, he found a home in Collected Company decks. Yep, there it is again. Just like with Rally, that meant you could use the Enter the Battlefield effect at instant speed. Even after both of those powerful cards were gone from Standard after rotating, Reflector Mage continued seeing play, reflecting things in Azorius aggro decks, before finally being hit with the Banhammer. Reflector Mage has proven it isn't only powerful enough for Standard. It has found multiple homes in Modern too, including, you guessed it, Collected Company decks, and more recently the Human Tribal decks which have been dominating Modern events for a while now. Reflector Mage will continue to see play in Modern and add to its resume. At number 3 we have a card that came into my mind immediately when I thought about what would be at the top of this top 10 list and while it didn't quite get there, it's pretty high, and that's Sphinx's Revelation. This card is a control deck's dream. It lets you hang back and kill and counter things and then as soon as you have a ton of mana and an opening, well you cast this to gain you a ton of life at the end of your opponent's turn, which can help you stabilize, and you draw a ton of cards so you can both dig for your win condition, stabilize, and draw more ways to kill and counter your opponent's stuff. In block and standard, it was nothing short of a format defining card. In block and standard, it saw play in the same kind of decks as Azorius Charm, that is to say, control decks that were running both blue and white. It was a big part of why Azorius Charm saw as much play as it did, since this thing existed in the same format, people wanted to play control decks with blue and white in them. It has also found success in modern, showing up in Jeskai Control and Blue White Control, both decks that will continue to see play in going forward. As the lawgivers and enforcers on the plane of Ravnica, the Azorius sometimes have to detain people, so it's a good thing this card is around. It's Detention Sphere at number 2. Basically a jacked up Oblivion Ring, Detention Sphere not only comes with the powerful exile effect that enchantment based removal spells frequently do, but it also exiles any copies of the card your opponent might have. This can be particularly strong against tokens, since those tokens aren't ever going to come back even if the sphere is destroyed. It had three top eights at the Block Pro Tour in Esper Control decks, a deck that was also effective in Standard, but it also saw play in other control builds like Bant and Jeskai. In Modern, it continues to see play in Blue White and Jeskai Control decks alongside Sphinx's Revelation. At number one, we have an Azorius Board Sweeper, Supreme Verdict. An uncountable board sweeper is a powerful thing, and as a result, Supreme Verdict convincingly takes number one on this list. It's so good that it even made my list on the entire card type of sorceries. 
But yeah, imagine a block and a standard format where you could play the top three cards on this list, a standard that actually existed between 2012 and 2014, and you can understand why blue-white based control decks were one of the best decks around during that time. The three of them give you an excellent card draw spell, powerful spot removal, and a four-mana uncounterable board sweeper. What pushes Verdict past Attention Sphere and Sphinx's Revelation is the fact that the Verdict has seen way more play in non-rotating formats. It is also played in a wider variety of decks than those two cards are played in in modern. Decks like Gifts and Given Control, Kiki Jiki Combo, Ad Nauseam, and Scape Shift, while also seeing play in the more typical Blue White Control and Jeskai Control decks. It even sees play in the Eternal formats, formats loaded with powerful counter magic, so the fact it can't be countered carries extra weight there. In Legacy, its primary home is in Miracle decks, where it can be used, sort of like in modern combo decks, as a way to help you stall until you can Miracle a card off the top of your library. In Vintage, it sees play in Landstill and Monastery Mentor decks. Well, that does it for this week's MTG Top 10. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you see future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to make sure you stay notified of my new videos. Thanks for watching.